It's food. It's food. Four thumb. It's food. It's food. It's food. Four thumb. Yo, what's up, guys? It's your girl, Savvy. This thing is really blowing my mind. So in, in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel gets revelation. Um, and I love Daniel so much because he always fasted. He always fasted and prayed. Um, and he was a righteous man, but he was always on his face for his people. You know what I'm saying? He was always coming to God and really just sacrificing himself, his flesh, so that his people, you know, he could plead on their behalf. Daniel went and fasted for three weeks, 21 days. And a man appeared before him and literally was like, God heard you on the very first day that you started your fast. The fact that you humbled yourself, the fact that you wanted understanding from God to the fact that you were willing to fast for, for it. You know, um, on day one, God sent me out to give you the revelation that you see. But because of the king of Persia's rebellion, that is the, the ruler that is over the nation of Israel right now in this time. Because of the king of Persia's rebellion, your leader's rebellion, I was held up for 21 days. The, the entire time you fast, and literally today, I'm able to reach you because Michael, he had to help him fight because of the king of Persia's rebellion. This revelation just really blew my mind because it's like, we, we don't understand that there's levels to this, this spiritual warfare. You know what I'm saying? And when God elevates you into a place of leadership, he don't play about the authority that you have and also in response, the consequences you're over all these people. You have a responsibility to these people. That's why people always want power and stuff. But with that, with with those mantles, with that power, with that authority comes so much responsibility. Like you're literally a shepherd and looking over sheep. And because of Daniel's ruler's disobedience, his rebellion, he calls Daniel in the spiritual realm to be delayed of his revelation when if he would have been on one accord god honors unity if he would have been on one accord even though he, he the king may not have even known that daniel was sitting there fasting and doing all that but if he was in god and being obedient he would have been on one accord unknowingly and the revelation that daniel needed would have came quicker so i just really wanted to do this word because the body of Christ is not unified. For one, we have all these denominations. That's division within itself. And the devil laughs at that because he's like, hi, you guys are sitting up here worried about what you're supposed to wear to church, how you're supposed to treat, how you're supposed to um, preach the word, how you're supposed to treat each other. When literally, if you all just had a relationship with God and came together and shared that relationship with God, the Bible literally tells us this. The greatest commandment is to love God. The second greatest commandment is to love others as we love ourselves. But we cannot learn how to love ourselves until we first love God and learn how to receive his love in return. And literally, if we practice those two things and be on one accord, the devil would have been shamed. He would have been in the ground, man. He wouldn't even be able to phase us. But because we have all this division going on amongst each other on different levels, you know what I'm saying? Whether you're just somebody sitting in the seats listening to the preacher, or whether you're the preacher, or whether you're an apostle, whatever it may be. Paul speaks about that the body, every single part of it is just as important. The eye is just as important as the hand. The brain is just as, as important as the heart. The feet are just as important as the, the, the doggone eyebrows. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. But every single part of the body is pertinent, is needed. So the head, the ruler, was on one accord with, let's say, Daniel, the heart. So he was delayed of a revelation that he could have been God. People, we got to get it together.
The body of Christ needs to be on one accord. This really grieves me. It saddens me. I was speaking with a, a friend about this. He's all the way in Africa. And he said it really like, saddens my heart that the people of God can't get on one accord, but those that worship the devil laugh at us because they say, you guys can't even get past division. That's like soldiers going to war and they turn around and just fight each other instead of the enemy. You up here mad about somebody that's supposed to be your sister or brother when the enemy is not that. It's those principalities that are operating in that person because they probably got some open doors or they're not on one accord with God. When you need to be fighting those principalities. Let's get it together, man. Food for thought. Even though we were free, we were still slaves in the mind. Message!